So anyway, uh, according to the psych department at Northwestern University, circularity in an argument is a defect in reasoning because it actually undermines your attempt to justify a claim or something or an action or something you've written or whatever. So I merely stated that something that was written on another website that he had some relation to was ridiculous, and I gave an example of why. So he got all defensive and went into this crazy rant saying that he knew the person responsible for the statement and that that person meant such and such, and and, and I simply stated, that, well, that's not what was written in the passage that I read. Then he just kept using the circular argument saying what it meant, even though it didn't say what he said it meant. <laughs> and then, then he started talking about the meaning of words. And then, oh my God, in my mind, I'm thinking about the day I was sitting there in front of the TV watching Bill Clinton say, well, what it depends on the meaning of is, what is, is. <laughs> Another thing that applies here, according to Northwestern, or at least one of the other sites I was looking on on these fallacious arguments, is that some of the arguments he made were legit. But when put together, they were undermined by claiming something that was written by his interpretation was completely different than from a normal person's interpretation. <laughs> I don't want to get into the weeds too much on this because... He and his show are a waste of time and cater to pretty much gullible people. But we moved on to other topics and agreed to disagree all very amicably. Uh, really, it, it was what debates used to be about. You weren't evil if you have a different point of view like it is in today's atmosphere. Well, I thought, well, that's fine. You know, we had a lively debate. That's great. No problem. I agree to disagree. So I finish the interview on a high note, we're laughing, and I go on about my day. Well, later, I get an email from this pseudo-intellectual nutcase, pretty much, from him thanking me for being on the show and commenting on the lively discussion we had. Then he went into this bizarre accusation that I intentionally misled his audience <laughs> which wouldn't be hard, I might add, with the kind of people that listen to that show, and and that I was a scammer that I purport to go after. <laughs> oh, man. When I responded with my anti-scam credentials and long public reputation for integrity, he said I was 100% bullshit. Even with that, I invited him on my show, and I'm sure he's too gutless to accept the invite. <laughs> but let me take a sidebar here. After the show, he went and looked at the passage I was commenting on, and he said, look above this. This person explained exactly what she meant. And I said something like, you're making the classic rookie mistake of either naively or arrogantly thinking that someone has read every single word of what you wrote. Yes, had I read every single word that was written, I would have had a different feeling about the part I did read, which I might add was the first bullet, really great big emphasized first bullet in a list of bullets. Uh, you know, a few words added to the bullet would have clarified it, but on its face value, it was indeed bullshit, which is why it stuck out, and I commented on it. Now, with the proper context, it would not have been bullshit. It would have been an entirely different meaning. But to accuse me of intentionally misleading his stupid audience, <laughs> now that's 100% bullshit. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty like the... The, uh, again, the current politicians that accuse you of doing what they're guilty of is going, you know, having a show for all these gullible people. So the entire point of this is that I shouldn't have accepted the engagement, especially just to help out their pitiful show. And it's the same as I've taught for speaking engagements for years and years and years and years and years. And I learned the hard way in the beginning. If the audience is not right for you, don't accept 